brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. Suds, suds, it's time for more suds. Hey everyone, <laughs> welcome to another episode. You guys watching my pen? <laughs> Where the pens are clicking away. I'm not going to make any noises during the intro. <laughs> fail, epic fail. <laughs> A huge pen. Okay, so this is another sud segment where really wonderful good Wonderfully good beer meets really crappy radio. Um, I am your hostess with the mostest, good old gal Juliana, and joining me today is good old boy Mike. Hey, this is good old boy Mike, and I'm the only one that can say the word kumquat here successfully. (laughs) Hey now, good old boy Tim here, uh, assistant brewer at East Nashville Beer Works. Oh yeah. Good old boy Caberton here. Um... I'm a, I'm a kumquat guy. Come, <laughs> kumquat. <laughs> That's what it says. And last but not least. Good uh, <laughs> returning from a long, long absence from the radio waves, it's good old boy Sean. I'm uh, one of the owners, head brewer, and uh, driver of the Winnebago at East Nashville Beer Works. So that's the like most that. important part. Someone's got to drive the Winnebago, and yes. I'm the man to do it. So how, how often do you service the restroom in that Winnebago? <laughs> More often than you would imagine. Yeah. <laughs> it really depends on where we stop for lunch. Yeah, yeah. Well, I can't say uh, enough of how cool it is to have uh, good old boy Sean back on the show. Yay. He was uh, one of our co-hosts that was on in season one. Um, I don't know who was laughing harder that day when the guy leans into the microphone and says, I like them naughty parts. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah, that was uh, <laughs> epic. Uh, one of the best uh, audience participation shows I think we had. It set the bar so low that we've managed to hit that on repeated occasions. So, <laughs> yep. It's good to be back. It, it is. It is. So really glad to have uh, Sean and Tim both here. The rest of you, eh, you know, yeah. hey, pretend you're still okay. in the bubble. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I get it. Well, um, <laughs> today's episode is a brewery takeover. We're going to sample some very interesting beers from Crane Brewing Company in Raytown, Missouri. Hey, good boy, Mike, why don't you tell us a little bit about Crane? Ah, see, Crane, that's what uh, I know was something about the Crane. All Crane technique. Does it work? If do right, no can defense. Yes, everybody knows the Crane from... Uh, Definitely uh, from Karate Kid. Well, there wasn't actually a ton of background info on Crane Brewing on their website, which, by the way, is really nice and has a very cool layout. Each beer description actually has links into some other places like Untapped and Beer Advocate and Rate Beer, which is really convenient for people wanting to do research and are too lazy to do that with all that extra clicking. Maybe they'll even link to some of our reviews from today. I did a read in the Kansas City Star, which is... An awesome Roger Miller song, by the way, that the CEO and co-founder, Michael Crane, started out with a Mr. Beer Kid. Wow. <laughs> this is a this, this is an awesome though. Though. Friends don't let friends use Mr. Beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that is true. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. Anytime I was asked that question, just spend the extra money. <laughs> Do it was, right. Wasn't that what you could get from the back of Rolling Stone magazine, though? You well, get it, it like service a, merchandise. Yeah. I, think, yeah. I think the yeah. more recurring so. is it, somebody gave it to me as a gift. Right. You know, right. That, that oh, is yeah. you're into beer. That's right. You're yeah. into beer. Yeah. I couldn't think of anything you to make you for the holiday. Beer. So here you go. Well, eventually he decided he had to start his own brewery. Well, that's a huge leap from Mr. Beer Cape to uh, own brewery. So they made their own uh, debut in 2014 at a beer festival and got a tremendous response from the crowd. Mr. Crane also got a shattered elbow when a CO2 tank ruptured and launched oh, itself into his arm like a torpedo. Nice. I've always terrible. heard that would happen. I, You know, I injure my elbow all the time, but it doesn't happen with a CO2. CO2 well, yeah. in, in, health, in healthcare, it's O2, it's oxygen, yes. and, they, and they always use the same phrase that... 
that will not stop for flesh and bone. <laughs> so, so Especially in an MRI. Right. 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 That must right. have been before he knew the crane technique. Uh, uh, there you go. Oh, oh, that was uh, almost pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, here's what was on their website uh, that says about their beers. Crane Brewing Company is focused on three styles, Saisons, Berliner Weiss, and Lambic. No matter what styles, hybrids, or experiments we pursue in the future, these styles will be at the heart of our efforts and output. We believe that these are three styles that are the foundations upon which we can place a variety of hops, wild yeast, souring bacteria, uh, wood aging, spices, fruit, and specialty malt. We see a desire for more beer of these styles, and we promise to challenge your expectations of what these styles can offer in relation to seasonality and the flavor combination. While we will distribute four standard versions of these styles year-round in bottles and kegs, we will offer a variety of brewery-only special releases and one-off experimental batches throughout the year. I wonder which beer is going to be called Broken Elbow. <laughs> hmm. Probably summer release, right? Well, that was awesome. <laughs> Coodle Boy Sean, would you do us the honor of telling us the lineup for today? Sure. We'll be tasting five beers from Crane Brewing Company. Uh, we're going to start, well, not necessarily in this order, but uh, on the list I have here, the Beat Vice, a beer only Dwight Schrute could love. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're also going to get into their Grapefruit Goes, their Tea Vice, their Orange, go- orange Goes, and then the Kumquat Vice. Yay! Thank you, good old boy, Sean. You're going to spew. Spew into this. <laughs> I like this lineup. <laughs> good old boy, Caperton, why don't you do us the honors of um, the Suds ratings? Good. Wait, you said the word honor and Caperton in like the same 20 seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's... Wow, Sorry, stretch. I was thinking You're about the coach. That? Mine didn't stretch, say that. Yeah. So. I was thinking about the kumquat. Okay, Sorry. all right. Yes, well... <clears throat> We will be discussing and rating these beers, guys, based on the Suds rating, uh, which includes the signature belching sounds, which are possibly not trademarked. <laughs> <laughs> if he looks at the trademark those, lawyer at the those, table, it, of yeah, course they're yeah, did. Mark. Here are those ratings. I'll run them down for you right now. A rating of one. Is that sucks? Give me anything but a bud. Yeah, I'm not sure that's a belch, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, <laughs> uh, next we have a rating of two. Was that a belch? Yeah, that was a belch. Uh, rating of three. Ah, oh, what a relief. There we go. Now we're getting into it. A rating of four is a body should not really make that sound. I like the music in the background, though. That's I, I hear that when I'm very divine. <laughs> and the highest rating of five is listen to that hang time. Give me another. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm sorry. That lasts a little bit always, you know. It gets you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's right here. Yeah. Yes. It gets me too, Kraper. <laughs> I'm so touched by the way Same we time. have those sun ratings. Same time, baby. <laughs> five to five. You know, this show needs more kumquat. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so it is, well, I mean, I won't go into it, but I mean, if you look at the word, right, I don't want to snicker on, on air. <laughs> oh, you are. But yeah, the 16-year-old in me says that's come quite all day long <laughs> and when i was 16 all day long was <laughs> a long day <laughs> a long day exactly all right all right Sometimes pull, us, it still pull is. us out pull yeah. us out here. all right all right all right let's my get to some beer drank all my pot <laughs> exactly. yeah let's get to some beer um good old boy mike why don't you start us off yeah, so we're going to start off with actually two beers uh, from Crane. Um, they have a very similar style, and I'll just talk about them kind of collectively here. Uh, they are uh, both Goza beers, and um, we actually have a couple of shows about Goza, and actually the most famous three minutes in radio about how to say Goza correctly. Um, 
if you've not uh, if it you want to goes go back, uh, like this mm-hmm. actually that's the name of the episode which is it goes a like this i think that's the name of the episode anyway so i'm glad i just butchered the pronunciation of all these beers <laughs> right so um the first one is actually a orange goza and the second one is a um grapefruit uh goza so um if you don't know about this particular style it's very rustic this actually the style of beer was what working people uh, drank in Germany. Um, it's characteristic with um, it's a bit sour um, and it has a salty, almost a saline like quality is kind of what you're uh, thinking about. So you'll see that on the description. It'll say sour, salty and uh, you know, tart usually is the other thing that people will say. So, um, but adding fruit is a very common thing that has been done to a lot of American versions of Goza. We have two renditions here. These are both at 4.1% ABV, and we're going to talk about them collect- collectively. One has orange, and the other has grapefruit on it. So I'm going to start off with my own tasting notes uh, about these. <clears throat> I think between the two, um, I like the... Uh, Grapefruit Goza. Uh, it was salt, saline-like. Um, it was lighty. It was fruity. I thought it was okay. It was, you know, a solid three for me. Now, the orange I didn't particularly like as much. And uh, the uh, I just thought the citrus was actually kind of fighting with it um, a little bit there. So I didn't uh, particularly enjoy that one as much. And my sedge rating for the orange is two. So... You know, um, it's always tough with, uh, you know, with Goza when you're kind of, you know, combining it with uh, sometimes a citrus. You know, it can really fight, you know, that pretty hard. And I just thought the orange was, it was definitely in round three, you know. So a lot of head nodding over there. Okay. Well, thanks. We will be back with some more discussion after this brief interlude. Come on back. (laughs) Rolling clouds and crashing surf Iridescent dunes reflecting By the light of a rising, glowing moon Seashore mesmerizing Night breeze hypnotizing We've come across these back roads none too soon Look to the left, to the right Keep your eyes on the road, my darling Wondering if we're only passing through Open roads and open windows My hand is yours forever, sweet love Welcome back, everyone. Today's episode is a brewery takeover with Crean Brewing Company. And up next... Today's oh. episode is brought to you by the word kumquat. Kum, kumquat. <laughs> yes, all 16-year-olds. It's that kind of day. <laughs> <laughs> so we know what Dave's voice acting part was. Sorry. Were you be Mr. Butthead? Oh, retro MTV. Gotta love it. <laughs> Anyways, up next um, is good old boy Tim. What are your takes on these two beers that we're talking about? Yeah, I mean, I, I thought these were pretty interesting, um, especially comparing them to each other because the other beers we tasted were all the Berliner Weiss style. And it kind of led into a discussion about the difference between Berliner Weiss and Gosa. Because, I mean, they're both both German beers, German sours, you know, in the brewing world, quick sours, kettle sours, Um but they're they're also both uh, at least partially or mostly wheat based beers, and I guess the main difference that I would say is um, the the salt and coriander, yeah, that go into go into a gosa. But aside from that, I mean, I really don't know. They could be soured with all sorts of different things. So aside from the salt, and I didn't get, I got a little coriander in the orange one, maybe. Um, you can kind of compare all these beers, but I thought, unfortunately, they were both very muted in the nose. I didn't get much of a smell of anything. Um, and then 
I, I could taste the difference. You could taste a slight orange and a slight grapefruit. I tasted really the, the pith more than anything. It had this like lingering bitterness. Um, it wasn't bad. I mean, they were both kind of middle of the road. Like Mike said, the fruited thing is, is strange. But, but yeah, I gave actually both of them a three. Cool. Good old boy Caperton. Well... <laughs> not to not to stray too far from the pack, but but yeah, these these two beers were super similar for me. They're they're um, I, I'm gonna say of of the of the two though, um, the, the the orange was definitely noticeably there was orange on the nose. There's no there was, way more presence. There was, yeah, yeah, it was definitely. Whereas the I grapefruit, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For for me anyway, the grapefruit was just sort of generically citrusy. You know, I, I maybe it got a little bit of grapefruit there at some point, but uh, but just more of a just a general citrus citrus uh, sort of quality. Um, but the orange I did feel like of the two was kind of just barely edged out the grapefruit. Um, they were both pretty dry, which uh, there was the orange had that sort of. Um, unripe orange you know when you get an orange that's not quite ready to go you know the bitterness is more yeah, pronounced so right the, yeah, yeah it was definitely. uh so i i yeah and and i gave both those they're both enjoyable though and i mean they'd be great on a on a hot day you know definitely which which you know would, it's low, lower <laughs> abv but i gave them both a, <laughs> I gave them both a Practicing three. I'm not sure. Boy, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> See, that's I was going for that tonality. Yeah, yeah. You almost nailed it. <laughs> Thank it was, you. Yeah. 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 He's trying to time your rating, but I like the fact that we're the only show where belching is encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> we should have an audience participation show around that. That would be a hoot. Yeah. Go to boy Sean. What are your takes on these? Well, beers? I'm going to go against the grain. Um, I agree with the other comments that I've made. The orange definitely comes through more. Um, the grapefruit, my disappointment was I just felt like I would just want a little more grapefruit to it. Um, that said, I think, you know, good old boy David's correct. I'm sorry. Caperton is correct. That, uh, <laughs> Dave's <Dave-Hoo>. not here. <laughs> yeah, uh, so uh, I gave them both fours. Um, they would definitely be something I would drink again. Um, I would definitely go with the grapefruit, probably over the orange a little bit. Um, the orange definitely came through a lot more, but uh, you know, I think you know, definitely, definitely good quality. Um, so the grape, the grapefruit came through less, but you liked that one a little more. Yeah, I mean, just because, because I mean, maybe if they did some something different with the oranges, um, you know, back that off a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, I definitely felt like they're both good beers, just, you know, just not that, you know, punch that I wanted. Well, okay. Um, for me, the, the orange one had, um, a slightly, it it was, it wanted to be sweet, but it wasn't. Um, I tasted more salt with that than I did with the grapefruit. The grapefruit, oddly, to me, had a side of window cleaner on the aftertaste, (laughs) which... (laughs) Call me crazy, but... I'm sorry, are you saying that that is a quality that's good or bad? (sighs) What kind of window cleaner? Depends if it's a window or your palate. (laughs) I think this might be a theme on this show today. (laughs) I agree. Which disinfectant does your (laughs) beer (laughs) smell (laughs) like? Tune in tomorrow to find out. So fresh, so clean. I know. Yeah, yeah. Slight deterrent for me. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't help the cause that almost all these cleaners are citrus infused. That is correct. Yeah. And so the slight. Were you like scrubbing out a tank before you came here? (laughs) It's just all over your hands, and and you're just blaming with the beer. And then you (laughs) use orange glue to get it off. (laughs) Uh, So, anyways, uh, yeah, it's a three for me for both. But, okay, and let me give a caveat to that. So, yeah, it was a three, but the thing is, is like for a Goza, it, you want it to be really light. You want it to be refreshing. So, even though these are threes, I mean, if somebody had a bottle of this for me in the middle of the summer, I'm certainly not going to turn it down because it's like the perfect thing to have. I got an yeah. opener for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, and I mean, I, I, I kind of said middle of the road, but I didn't mean that in a too uh, negative way either because I think you encounter a lot of these beers that have these these terrible off flavors mm. and... You know, you alluded to a little cleaner, but aside from that, no one got any of these terrible 
butyric or any of these other flavors. I mean, I think they're well executed. Uh, Very well executed. Yeah. Yeah. I would probably ask, does anybody bring a Westbrook or a, uh, an Anderson Valley? Valley. Anderson that was going to be what I was going to ask. That's probably yeah. what I would have done, yeah. you know. And that's yeah. kind of what I compare them to. And or that's why a glass I think of water. it's a three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or we, uh, we, we had this, I can't remember the brewery, but it was, um, it was out of, um, California and it was a Berliner Vi- or sorry, a Gosa that was, they used part of the seawater out of California. That was, yeah. Yeah, it was it was wild. Liber- yeah, it was Liber- wild. Libertine. Libertine. Yeah, yes. Libertine. Yeah, There's really sea salt Gosa. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Couldn't mm. get enough We're of that. We're not really one. talking about that today. I know, yeah. Really. Okay. But as a marker for, another for Gosa. Show. Yeah, geez yeah. Louise, it was good. And salt, because you, I tasted it more in the orange, like you said. Well, you know, yeah. Kansas City is just such a salt-laden you know, right. capital of the right. U.S. Right. <laughs> the cows love it. I don't. Here we go. <laughs> we a little cowbell in this right here. Exactly. Yeah. There. Uh, bueno. Bueno. Okay. Well, moving on to the next beer. Go to boy Tim. Which one did you want to talk about? Yeah, I was going to talk about the T Weiss, which is a distinctly American take on an old world German ale. The uh, the T Weiss combines Kansas City's own Hugo Berry Roybus tea with a spritzy sour wheat beer to exceedingly refreshing results. <laughs> Uh, so refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> so refreshing. <laughs> Quite refreshing. I'm sorry. Is that your rating or is that what good you old boy think Sean's good refreshing old boy Sean. right now? Yeah, I, literally. I, he's am, refreshed. I am so refreshed it took my breath away. <laughs> <laughs> Both noses now, baby. <laughs> so, what'd you think of this beer? Well, I mean, I uh this this I think was was probably my favorite out of the bunch. I mean, I was I'll admit I was excited coming into this to taste this beer. I I'm a fan of many different teas. I'm a fan of many different Berliner vices. So it seemed like it'd be, it, it's, it's kind of a risky thing, I think, because tea can be a little alienating. But this one with the rooibos, which is very herbal and, and fruity, especially, I guess, this is a berry rooibos, um, it, it, it hit all the right notes for me. And it was a pretty interesting balance. It wasn't overly bitter. I tasted some some orange as well. It's kind of citrusy, very fruity and and um, bright. I mean, I think overall this one, yeah, it was my favorite. I gave it a four. Cool. Good boy, Caperton. What'd yeah, you think? I I really like this beer too. And again, like like Tim, I sort of I sort of dig the. I almost like the idea of using tea in beer. Um, a lot of times more than the actual end result and i felt like this was because i guess it can be a little alienating you know and a lot of people bring sort of their baggage to what they think about tea right but uh but this this beer was um you know it didn't hit you over the head with with a lot of sort of like leafy tea sort of flavors it was there were a lot of berries on the nose and I got sort of a raspberry tartness from it, you know, that I thought was super enjoyable. I mean, that um, I just think they nailed it on this. And, um, yeah, yeah, nice, nice tartness. It was, it sort of was nicely balanced between those two, the berries and the tartness. I thought I got a big kick out of it. So I gave it a four. Cool. Go to boy, Sean. What'd you think of this beer? Well, it seems like I'm uh, raise, raising the bar because I uh, let's just get this out of there. I put a five down for this. I thought it was excellent. It was well yeah. executed. But, you know, uh, uh, you know, my notes were it's very subtle, pleasant aroma, nice citrus notes in the flavor. Not what I was expecting whatsoever with it being a tea, like you know, yeah. like, like we yeah. discussed the the pre, you know. The, the expectations people have um, it was sub, it was very sublime compared to the rest of the lineup um, just just everything about it I just thought was really well done and and really enjoyed this a lot it was definitely the, the highlight for me cool um, I'm in love with this beer as well um, this wasn't my first time having it um, I actually had it on the last day of GABF um, they brought out a couple of bottles and I was like you gotta be kidding me this is so cool so I had to make sure that on our way back I picked up a bottle of this um, I, 
because I'm a big tea fan too. And it was just the right blend. I mean, to me, it was perfect. And this is something I could have all year round. Um, just great flavor, great balance, great fruitiness to it too. And it, to me, that's what a lot of people miss about some teas is the nice subtle fruitiness that you get some, you know, from different varieties. Um, obviously this wouldn't be like an, you know, an Earl Grey collaboration, but I think it was um, the best type of tea to have with a Weiss. And um, I got to make one of my own now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just saying. Yeah. Um, yeah. Gave this one a four. Good old boy, Mike, what'd you think of this beer? So uh, with the tea Weiss from Crane Brewing, uh, my tasting notes on this are a citrus nose. Um, I was seeing kind of orange and grapefruit on this um this was the first beer i had in the flight so sometimes you know i I was looking here i'm like well of course you had orange and grapefruit in the flight and that may have no that wasn't it i actually had this you know fresh with a fresh palate i thought was uh the taste was very uh, citrus very acidic um kind of a drying finish to it i thought the tea kind of got lost uh, in this, so as it's warmed up, more of the tea has come out, but it's 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 in the background for yeah. sure. Yeah, I agree. It, I it, agree. Has, it is coming out more now. Yeah, we had this you know light discussion. You know, I was saying that most of the beers that I've had that have been blended with tea in some shape or form, that's very difficult to pull off really well. And I I don't know that I've really run across a whole lot of beers that I really am looking to say it either helped the beer or was complimenting the beer or was fighting the beer. Many times it just gets lost, and I'm, I'm going to have to say that, to me, that's what happened with this particular beer. I thought the tea just kind of got lost in all the other fruit that was there. So my Sedge rating for tea Weiss is a three. I mean, tea, it's, tea can be so so varying and, and it covers such a large variety. I mean, you can't even compare it to coffee or anything like that because, like, this is an instance of non-caffeinated herbal. I mean, you could just call this an herb almost or... I guess it's a bush more than anything, but, um, you know, what do you make tea out of, whether it's green tea or chai or, or the English black teas or anything like that? They're all so different. Um, and so you need to be like, if you see tea in a beer, well, what kind is in there? And if it's rooibos, in this case, it was excellent. Yeah, mm. true. Moving on, good old boy Caperton, what beer would you like to talk about? Well... Uh, the beat vice has <laughs> fallen to me. So, um, I, you know, again, with this beer, uh, beets are sort of, uh, you know, for saisons or these sort of light alcohol, sort of crushable summertime beers. Beets to me seem like they would really work well, but a lot of times they don't. Um, but with this one, you know, I mean, you know, I gave it a little sniff and it didn't really give up much to me on the nose at all. Maybe a little bit of earthiness, but boy, the, the, as soon as I took a sip of it though, it was just super earthy and the beat presence was, was right there, I thought. Um, so maybe not the most subtle beer of this, of this flight, <laughs> but, uh, and, but possibly even more divisive though than the, than the tea, you know, um, because it, it is, it does have a, um, there's a little bit of, there's a little bit of dirt on these beats, you know, I mean, it's, 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 a uh, it's an that earthy, is e to the Z, oh, <laughs> it's, 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 a, it's an earthy beer. So, I mean, it's, but, um, as an ingredient, I, I didn't think it really, um, I don't think it really, um, detracted too much. There was a nice tartness sort of on the back end of it. Um, so that it still sort of fell within the style guidelines for a vice beer or whatever, but, or Berliner. But, um, yeah, I, 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 I really liked it because of the, because of the beats. You know, it wasn't it wasn't super hidden, but it didn't um, it didn't like really push me away. So I, I gave it a four. Uh, cool. Took me a while to get there, but there it is. <laughs> <laughs> How many times can I say earthy? <laughs> Good boy, Sean. What did you think about this beer? 
Yeah, where to start? Um, <laughs> it was that is e I, to the z o twiddly disgusting. <laughs> uh, yeah, let's just go ahead and get this out of the way too. I give it a suds rating of two. Um, wow, don't hold back. I mean, it just uh, you know, I just the earthy note in the nose. Uh, it, if you remember the uh, episode of The Office where where Jim is pranking Dwight by being Dwight, and he says, you know, beats beat bears, bears beat Battlestar Galactica, and it's like <laughs> beats beat the beer. In the nose with the Earth Note. I mean, it's just it's just right there. Um, you know, it's off putting unless you're Dwight Schrute. So, <laughs> uh, not my jam. But uh, you know, it's you got to you got to be adventurous, and I do appreciate the fact. I, I mean, it wasn't it wasn't anything that I'm you know not anything I want to revisit again. But at the same time, too, it was like, well, this is very adventurous, and and give them give them an A for effort um, for for giving this a try. Um, just yeah, I. Beats aren't my jam. <laughs> <laughs> it says here it's the beer that made Michael Crane famous. Is that? I mean, is this the beer? Or? This is the beer. This is probably the beer he took to the beer festival. Yeah. That's what I'm betting. Yeah. Okay. Well. And and right quick, we should make sure that the listeners know that it, it is a bright red beer. It is. Yeah. <laughs> it's an you, absolutely gorgeous Oregon. color. It is an absolutely gorgeous color. Yeah. So that's mm-hmm. one thing about beer. You could use yeah. it for lane markers in your driveway. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, being a girl that was born in Scranton, Pennsylvania. <laughs> um, yes, I am a fan of Dwight Schrute, and I am a fan of this beer. Um, maybe it's all those years of having borscht every winter. I have no idea. <laughs> You give me a side of um, sour cream with a little bit of gin, and I think I would have a really good time with this beer. Just saying. Um, yeah, it's earthy and it's dirty, but I really enjoyed it, <laughs> and I gave it a four. Uh, I know, I know. Uh, <laughs> here we go. And good old boy Mike is shaking his head at me. Oh, well, we'll do mine after the break. I'm just wondering, I mean... When you're pairing borscht with beer, do you go pick the beer first or do you or wait until the borscht is done or what's the order on that? You have a variety in the fridge. So depending on how dirty your borscht is. <laughs> She's looking at me like and I'm going, do not throw anything at me. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Just saying. Is it like a surprise meatball night? We'll discuss in just a minute. But baby, the whole elation Riding down this lover's avenue As slow as a willow blows Or as fast as the whirlwind grows We glide beneath the stars in cobalt blue To the right Keep your eyes on the road, my darling Wondering if we're only passing through Open roads and open windows My hand is yours forever, sweet love Our eyes ahead on these back roads with a view Welcome back, everyone. We are in the middle of a brewery takeover with Crane Brewing Company. And good old boy Mike was just about to tell me how much he loves this beer. (laughs) Well, I'm still thinking about the borscht. I mean, I'm thinking, is there like a good theme song that goes with borscht, you know, or I mean, do you have borscht like more than once a week or like, you know, whenever there's like leftover meat? (laughs) She's like, again, like, you know. Huh? Please, do not, <laughs> please do not throw anything at me. I swear, you know, if just you know, looks could kill. There you go. I, maybe I should talk about the beer. Yeah, <laughs> run, Mike, run. All right, so the uh, beat Weiss from uh, Crane uh, Brewing. Um, my tasting notes on this kind of interesting. So I said there was a lot going on here. Uh, very interesting. I think it's one of the few beers, uh, that I've seen with beats that I thought worked. Um, you know, it's one of those things where 
and I think this is the case with an awful lot of vegetables that uh, the vegetables get lost in beer because they're not naturally aromatic. And um, you, that's just kind of the way that it goes, whether it's cucumbers or carrots or in this case, you know, beets. It's just something about, you know, vegetables that are in the ground. They're just not naturally, you know, incredibly aromatic. So um, I was kind of like, wow, the color's there, but I really wonder what this is going to be like. And when I smelled it, I'm like, wow, I can actually smell the beet, you know. Um, and it wasn't bad either. I kind of liked the aroma kind of going around it. And I'm like, hmm, all right, this is going to be really interesting, you know, kind of tasting through this. And I thought it all kind of was working. I thought it was really good harmony. I thought it was a good presentation. I thought it was a very, uh, uh, it was a bit of a niche beer, but it still struck me as something I thought that um, there was enough ri- originality, what was going on here, that I think uh, that kind of pulled it off. So, um, Let's see. What else did I write down here? Um, you know, the uh, I, I thought the there wasn't anything that was just overwhelming, you know, about this either. Um, in terms of the beer overwhelming the beats or the, you know, the the balance kind of between it all, I thought was, you know, it was in check and in balance. So I like this. I It was a good solid three for me. So Cool. Go to boy Tim. What did you think of this beer? I, I was a fan as well, but I'm a fan of beets. So I think if, obviously, if you don't like beets, you, you won't like this beer. I'm not going <laughs> to like this beer at all. And, turns out. Yeah, it turns out. So I Timmy, think- you have to eat. Do you drink your beet beer? Because I told you you could have your vegetables. <laughs> yes, dear. But if you were raised on something like canned beets, you should you should give it a shot because uh, it's, it's, it's so whole, much better. It's so fresh. Yeah, I mean, in the nose, like, like Mike, you smell the earth and you smell the dirt. I mean... It smells like your whole kitchen when you boil some beets. I mean, that is E to the Z or <laughs> Tweedle it disgusting. Yeah, but it wasn't <laughs> disgusting. So it was good. And and the flavors when I first had it when it was really cold, the you get a lot of the beets first, then you get the sourness after. But as it warms up, they kind of blend together, I think. And that really made it a nice beer. I mean, it is a only for a select crowd, but that crowd's going to really enjoy it. I, I gave it a four. I can see why this was a big hit, you know, for, uh, it was Michael Crane, right? Uh, Is that right? Yeah. Um, you know, especially in a, in a beer festival environment where there's so many things and, you know, I can see this really catching a lot of buzz in a beer festival environment. Hey, did you try the beat beer, man? You know, and having people come over and try it. And so, you know, I think that if, I doubt that they got that same reaction to some of the other, you know, Weiss beers they had here. You know, the go, hey, have you had go? Yeah, I've had go. You know, I've never had beet beer. You know, so I think the novelty of it, uh, I think, is probably what captured a lot of that uh, popularity. But I think it had capitalized on that buzz. You know, by actually producing a great sure. beer and yeah. keep people yeah. coming back. You yeah. know, for other things they're making. Well, it's, so. it's something you don't expect to work, I think, and then when it works, it makes it even better. Mm. True. Okay. Last, but certainly not least, good old boy Sean. Come the kumquat. Uh, <laughs> this is this is this is going to be a divisive one. Uh, I, I think for for those of us at the table, um, I guess let's just go with my uh, my notes. Um, it's like you've uh, spent a day uh, cleaning the floors with Murphy's oil, oil soap. Uh, it tastes like you've been huffing those fumes all day long, uh, and I mean this in the best possible way because I gave this a suds rating of four. Um, for me, I really wanted, I really wanted, um, the fruit note, uh, that is in this beer in more of the orange and the, uh, and the, uh, the grapefruit beers that we had earlier, uh, just more of that punch. Cause this really comes through. It's really strong. Um, yeah, I also joked that this is the new shimmer of beers. For those of you that remember the old Saturday Night Live skit with, uh, <laughs> it's actually Dan Aykroyd and Gilda Radner, and they're they're debating whether or not it's a, a, a you know a floor cleaner or a dessert topping, and turns out it's both. Uh, <laughs> this beer is not, you know, I don't know about its cleaning capabilities, but it definitely is. A, it is a you know a beer that uh, is nice and refreshing. So, uh, yeah, it's. Uh, but I'm you know curious to uh, see where the discussion goes from here because this is this is definitely a. It's it's really in your face. It is. Um, and speaking of in your face, the nose on this is definitely Murphy's oil soap. Like the moment you said it, I was like, "You are so right." 
And I like Murphy's oil soap. And I like that's that smell. weird. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like to drink it. I don't know. No, uh, yeah. No, I mean. Hi, my name is Sean, and I have Murphy's <laughs> oil <laughs> soap all day long. <laughs> Got to pick your poison. <laughs> Everybody's going to have a hobby. <laughs> but, yeah, I mean, that being said, though, okay, a kumquat is a very distinctive flavor. All I've pun, never had one. All puns intended. I don't know if I have either. I don't think I've ever had a kumquat. It's it's very distinctive, but it's here. Yeah. It's okay. it's floating around, and there is like this just slight sweetness to it at the end. You know what I mean? I'm getting I'm, I'm getting a salty like brininess, but I'm still getting this slight sweetness at mm-hmm. the end. And I think this is spot on, and I think this is really good. I mean, again. It is not your average fruit to use, but I mean, it's it's beautiful for what it is. I gave this a four. Uh, uh. <laughs> there it is. Represent. <laughs> she never high fives me. She just, me. she just gives me that look. You may never agree with her. I, I agree with her a lot. Okay, good. 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 Um, and I would say that I agree with uh, a lot of uh, tasting notes uh, for. Kumquat Weiss from Crane Brewing we're talking about here. Um, I also wrote down a sweet orange oil of aroma. Um, so I haven't sniffed uh, Murphy's oil lately, so I'm not really quite sure exactly what that smells like. I've got like. some in the car. Yeah. I, I got Do you have a spare the, pack? That got, you I just, got a little bag you know, in the car. Yeah, we, we I got knew that Sean was use. probably packing. So. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you got a bread bag? You know, <laughs> definitely plenty of... Uh, of kumquat. In fact, um, the question I asked was, I really wonder what the fruit ratio is, you know, to beer, because I'm betting that they had to stuff like eight pounds, you know, per gallon of, you know, uh, fruit. Per gallon us. of Murphy's. Yeah, yeah right. <laughs> um, it is very fruit forward. Uh, it's tart. It's very bright. Um, you know, I kind of like this. And, you know, I, I, you don't really get to sample a lot of things that have a kumquat fruit off them because it can really overwhelm everything. And I actually think everything's in really great harmony here. Um, my sedge rating for the kumquat weiss is a four. Nice. Good old boy, Tim. What'd you think about this beer? Well, I, I'm going to go in the other direction. Here. <laughs> um, I, I, I got all of the cleaner and... If you're going to spew, <laughs> spew into this. <laughs> Pretty much. Pretty much. <laughs> I mean, it's kind of like the scene out of Wayne's World. Absolutely. <laughs> and I mean, I, it. the problem is once I got that cleaner, I couldn't get past anything. And I'll admit that I don't know that I've ever had a kumquat. I probably have at some point or had it in something, but I don't know what the exact flavor is. So that could be part of the... The, the detractor for this for me because i i get too many weird flavors it's it's orangey it's kind of peppery it has this like piney smell and taste it's uh, a kumquat a little lemony <laughs> yeah i guess that's what it is and it's like if you don't like beads you're probably not gonna like the beet vice and it sounds like i'm not a fan of kumquats which might be why i haven't eaten many of them and so i'm not a fan of this beer hmm. and i gave it a two <sighs> One eight hundred kumquats. Please deliver to Tim this week. <laughs> yes, he absolutely loves it. I would like a free extra pound. Yes, <laughs> kumquat dot com. Yes, yeah. go to <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe Caperton is up next. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to recall that there was an episode of Beavis and Butthead that involved the word kumquat yes. quite extensively. Yes, yeah. Yeah, we'll have to yes. see if we can hunt that down. Yeah. Yes. Glad to know that I'm in good company. <laughs> <laughs> so, release the beast. Caperton, well, let us oh know. My gosh. Do not say that word around him. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> There's a great... Anyway. Um, <laughs> so, having never had a kumquat, and I'm sort of... I'm going to... Agree with Tim a lot here, probably. Um, I, you know, I just wasn't feeling this beer. So I almost couldn't get over the, the 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 nose on this. It was just, yeah, it smelled like a freshly mopped 
men's room to me. And uh, good to know you've seen. But those you know that's not a time. deep the Z or Twiddle it <laughs> yeah. disgusting. So not necessarily a deal breaker. A well traveled. Okay. <laughs> not necessarily a deal breaker, but yeah, a little bit. So um, it took me a minute, and then. Um, but it's like you guys are all saying. It's it's so forward. But I got citrus, but not so much orange. Maybe more I, like I kept saying, green popsicle, sort of lemon lime. Lemon. Yeah. Um, but again, still very. And as it warmed, it got odd. You know, it. it Worse. Uh, yeah. <laughs> See, I, I went back for more and just finished the rest of it. And, Interesting. Yeah. I thought it got better. As it yeah. Got yeah. Better. Uh, Me too. It, well, it got more complex. More quaddy. It got more complex <laughs> yeah, for sure. It did. Yeah. yeah. But uh, but uh, I I just I couldn't get past all of that, and, and I'm gonna have to give it a two. No. Why don't you guys split the uh, bag of kumquats this week? I do like <laughs> that. Said I do like guys. green popsicles though. Okay. And I almost gave it a three, but as it, I wrote down two and then I was wavering and then it warmed and I'm sticking with two. So. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. Well, great beers though. Very interesting. I yeah. Got, that's I mean, a very I've nice lineup. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm very impressed with it. There the was beers. a lot going on there and I'm, I'm happy to have had it. You know, I would. Uh, well, I thought it was, uh, the one thing that, uh, caught my attention was, um, there was some Me Too beer here, and then there were some innovative some things that were a bit off the beaten path. Yeah, yeah. you know. Well, if beaten, the first beat, beer was his beat beer, <laughs> come on. I mean, he he sort of came out of the gate, sort of. Uh, hmm. You know. So, what would the conversation sound like if one of you guys get said, you know, Sean, I think we should make a beat beer. <laughs> uh, I mean, a lot, of, a, lot of, a lot of a lot of breweries have, right? I mean, there's a lot of sugar. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. almost yeah. a natural. Yeah, I mean, yeah. with yeah. the soil microbes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, when, you know, when we get that separate facility that we can just let all sorts of bugs and beets yeah. run loose. All, all the beets, red Cumberland punch, but a lot yeah. of purple, a lot of beets lot of red purple. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, beets, yeah. beets come in different colors and shapes. And then you got you got your beat greens, you know. I know the snare drum beat, and I know the. Bass drum. <laughs> well, the, the but do you the know the Go Go's have the beat? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> They've got it. <laughs> they, they have it. Got it. Well, I, you know, I think part of why that's going to do well, you know, for Crane is that instead of you know uh, going toe to toe with everybody and more Me Too beer, that the distinctive natures of these, you know, they're going to it's going to be polarizing. They're going to be picking up a lot of people because of the distinctive flavors they sure. have here. But they're also going to lose, you know, a certain measure of crowd because it doesn't taste like everything else that's on the wall, you know, as well. And so I think it's always an interesting choice when I see brewers that um, are uh, trying to make a decision between those two in their overall lineup. Um, you know, I'd, I'd like to say that I think that uh, uh, Michael's come a long way since his Mr. Beer Kit. Right. Definitely, right. definitely, yeah. No, I mean everything. I think was well executed. These five yeah. beers were great. Yeah, yeah, yeah they, they were very were, good. They were, they were good. well done. There, no rad IPA or anything like that. So I mean, he's yeah. No, yeah. to me like, that's refreshing. I like, I like the direction he's going. Yeah, because sure. everybody can make an IPA. I mean, Everyone can make a three, stout. You know three what I mean? Three Berliners. And, well, and I'm yeah. thinking a little bit about the Kansas City market as well. Right. You got Bole Boulevard right so there. I'm thinking, yeah. you know, yeah. Boulevard and you know. uh uh, Nebraska Brewing are both, you know, very big, you know, um, in Kansas City itself. And there's not anything really like this, you know, in those lineups. So I'm thinking that's the reason why they've, you know, um, they're not having to really compete with people, you know, one on one. They're, they're able to, you know, put something on the wall that is very distinctive. But that being said, these particular styles are things that could be easily replicated. <clears throat> don't require a tremendous amount of uh, culturing or, you know, uh, moving their way through uh, more of a traditional sour program as well. So, well, I want to try the Lambics that you yeah. talked about them yeah. having. Yeah. Yeah. It seems like uh, that would be great. I didn't realize they had that in their lineup. So, no, I didn't either. I mean, but then again, I didn't go to Crane. You know, I just was floating through St. Louis on my way back. I and picked up a Brett Saison that was really good. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, are they in that. Missouri or Kansas? 
Missouri. <laughs> Get, they're I'm in Missouri. sorry, that's yeah. just Tech a, com- that's a, a common PC technique Mo. of asking anybody in you know Kansas City. Are you, are you in Missouri or Kansas? <laughs> yes. You know, and either like, way, they'll probably get really mad. Yeah, but cheers to a brewing company that's really thinking outside the box. Well, you know, and I'd have to know which barbecue to pair this with. Right, that would be the, the crane technique thing. is a good one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very true. Very true. Well, I think this has been a really cool episode. Um, really, this- did you listen to Caperton's part? I did, <laughs> yes. and it was especially cool. Come thank you. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Well, <laughs> listeners. Thanks for enjoying this episode, and you can catch all of our episodes online, as well as on SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, YouTube, Google Play, PRX, and Spreaker, our native media host. iTunes, Google Play, and our own Android app are the easiest ways to enjoy the show on your phone. Just search for Sip Sud Smokes on iTunes or in the Google Play Store. We love your feedback most of the time. And you can reach us online anytime at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Do us a big favor and take the time to rate our episode on iTunes. Leave a five-star rating and tell us how you enjoyed the show. That's a great big help to us. Yeah, and the daily tasting notes flow out of Twitter every day. You can follow them at sipsudsmoke. And the Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news, so check that out as well. Please take time to rate this episode if you're listening online. I want to thank all of our hosts for joining us today, and especially our newbies and our returnees. <laughs> it's good to be back. <laughs> I think he chuckled well every time Dave said, or Caberton said the word kumquat. I know, he did. It was cool. Just like that. Yes, yes. I, I, um, Beavis and Butthead. It's a you, people. It's a you. <laughs> well, good old boy, Mike. Hey, it was great being here. Come back. Keep on sipping. And good old boy, Tim. Beats, Bears, Battlestar Galactica. <laughs> Good old boy, Caperton. Keep on quadding. <laughs> and good old boy, Sean. It's a b- beer and a floor cleaner. Or maybe top it off with your dessert. <laughs> that was it. That was, that was it. <laughs> uh, this is Go like Gal Juliana. Bit. Thanks so much for listening to us. And keep on chuggling. Tan Ham production of Sip Suds and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time.